most people just assume their water is safe to drink. Until it's not. What happened in Flint, Michigan in 2014 made water crises in other cities much harder to ignore. You need to get your water tested. This is a national issue. Lead has been showing up in drinking water all over the country. In the last few years, over 5 million people drank water from systems that violated the EPA's lead limit. I was given brace poison water unknowingly for a very long period of time. But getting to the truth of whether your water is safe to drink is actually more complicated than you might think. If you want to create a drinking water crisis and destroy the public trust, you cover up the problem. What does racial injustice have to do with it? People lie to us, and they put us in danger, and they hurt our children. A lot. So if you're watching this and wondering, how do I even know if my water is safe? Well, that's a good question. In August 2019, tens of thousands of people in Newark, New Jersey, were told to drink bottled water because of lead contamination, even in homes that were given filters by the city. Newark is a largely poor, mostly black and Hispanic city, and its lead levels are among the highest in the U.S. for large water systems. Some houses here tested four times the federal limit. The governor and mayor said they were taking this very seriously. We will do everything we can. I know the mayor is doing everything we can. But some activist teachers, parents, and others will tell you. Now, after all of this time, you're finally saying, oh, it's a public health crisis? The thing is, Newark officials had known about lead in the water for at least two years. They just downplayed it. We have data from years of, of sampling in people's homes showing alarmingly high lead levels. That's Dimple Chowdhury. She's a lawyer with the Natural Resources Defense Council who's suing Newark over lead in the water. Newark did not do a good enough job making people aware of the dangers posed by lead in their drinking water. And by the way, this is a hallmark of official reactions to a lead crisis. Minimize the problem. And that's exactly what the city did. In a 2017 brochure to residents and on the city's website, that page has since been deleted. In a Facebook post in April 2018, the city wrote the water was, quote, absolutely safe to drink, in all caps. The mayor even tweeted the hashtag, Newark is not Flint. And then there was this. Newark's water has always been the, the best uh, and safest water. Uh, in the state and probably in the country. That's a Democratic Mayor Roz Baraka speaking in 2018. There's nothing wrong with the source water uh, uh, that Newark has uh, at all. Pause that for a second. Pay close attention to the words he's using here. There's nothing wrong with the source water uh, uh, that Newark has uh, at all. That's a misleading statement. While you may have a clean and pristine water source, that says nothing about what happens from the time that water leaves the source and enters someone's tap. So exactly how does lead get into people's drinking water? The water leaving the treatment plant is never a problem. Mark Edwards is an engineer at Virginia Tech who helped expose lead contamination in Washington, D.C. and Flint. It's always the water as it comes out of the tap that we're concerned about. That's because most lead contamination happens right in front of your home. Lead enters the water from the smaller pipes that can Connect your house to the water main. Or from lead solder around piping and fixtures. No one knows exactly how many lead pipes are still around, but it's estimated between 6 and 10 million. And get this, cities don't have to tell people where lead pipes are located. So a lot of people who are at risk have no idea. That could change under new rules proposed by the EPA, but... As long as that lead pipe is in front of your house, you cannot trust the water that you're drinking. So, by law, water utilities have to put chemicals in the water to prevent lead pipes from leaching. It's called corrosion control. It's kind of like applying a Band-Aid. If the water becomes too acidic, the lead starts dissolving into the water and pieces of lead start flaking off at very, very high concentration. So even a gulp of water could cause elevated blood lead and health harm. To be clear, no amount of lead exposure is safe. Even trace amounts can cause irreversible damage in kids developing brains. So then, why would something so dangerous be directly connected to people's drinking water? Lead has a remarkable range of uses. In the 20th century, lead was practically everywhere. In toys, paint, pipes, plumbing, cosmetics, even canned goods. There's a reason gas pumps today have an unleaded option. There's a difference, a powerful difference. 
For years, oil companies were putting it in their gas. Almost every car uses lead. And the thing is, the lead industry knew it was dangerous, but they continued to promote it as safe in coloring books for kids and ads that said lead paint was a clean and healthy product. They even advertised to hospitals. Lead plays a vital part. For decades, the lead industry actively worked to downplay studies that showed it was harmful. Lead has many other uses. It's one reason lead wasn't banned from paint until 1978. Then came lead pipes, and gas didn't get a full ban until the 90s. There is a, a broad consensus on the part of everybody except the lead industry and its spokesman that lead is extremely toxic at extremely low doses. The lead industry even blamed lead poisoning on parents of color, saying they didn't know how to use lead paint in a safe way. There's no safe way to use lead. And victim blaming is another hallmark of a lead crisis. We've known that this has been a problem for years, but the solution has only come in the last few months. Sabre B is a co-organizer with the Newark Water Coalition. Newark is one of those urban areas full of black and brown folks who a lot of times people just kind of overlook their issues or don't give them effective solutions to those issues because they really don't wish them well. The group formed in 2018 because they felt the city wasn't doing enough to inform people about lead in the water. The city maintains that the East Ward is not affected. They don't get filters, they don't get water, they don't get testing, anything. We believe every ward in the city is affected. When people need water, we're providing water. I mean, we don't even ask people for their IDs here. You say you live in North and you need water, period, you can get it. The way we've seen these lead crises play out shows how we ignore and how we marginalize black and brown voices. And it's not by accident, it's by 20th century design. These homes, now seriously deteriorated, Racist policies in housing, jobs, and transportation pushed people of color into failing areas of major cities. You talk about redlining, you talk about disinvestment in healthcare, disinvestment in schools. What you see here is, you know, the effects of systemic racism over time. Newark is a typical example of this. At least 24 persons are killed. When black people protested police brutality and racism in 1967, this only solidified the misguided idea that the city was a dangerous place to live. Governor Hughes terms the rioting open rebellion, just like wartime. As white people fled to the suburbs, poor black and brown folks were forced into areas with conditions like lead-tainted housing. Full of chipped, flaking plaster, and peeling lead paint. To this day, lead poisoning disproportionately impacts people of color. Some of my students really are worried and are saying so is racism and now I'm worried about water I drink. Why is it always something where I live? Yvette Jordan is a public school teacher who's suing Newark over lead in the water. Students are saying to me, so Mrs. Jordan, I need a bottle of water. You have a bottle of water for me? Statistically, black children are more likely to have higher blood lead levels than white children. And environmental hazards of all kinds are disproportionately located in communities of color. I don't drive, so it makes it even more difficult for me to pick up bottled water because I can't put four packs of bottled water on the bus. But that's the sacrifice I'm willing to make for my kid. I don't even know how much lead he's been exposed to because I've been giving him the tap water since he was 10 months. He's five years old now. Every time I turn on the water, I'm thinking about how it's not safe. My whole concern is he just won't be able to remember all the dinosaurs or even expand on that knowledge and learn other things. You can't see it. You can't smell it. You cannot taste it. We should have been notified, and we weren't. Whenever you have a lead in drinking water crisis, something's gone wrong with corrosion control. That's why poor regulation and mismanagement is at the heart of many lead crises. We asked Mayor Baraka how lead got into Newark's water. Our, our uh, chemical that we put in the water became ineffective. That's not really a thing. There is an obligation, a legal obligation, to install and maintain adequate corrosion control treatment to make sure that people aren't being exposed to high levels of lead. Is there any way you could have foreseen this chemical would stop working? No, I don't, I don't even think uh, the engineers or the scientists at the plant 
uh, uh, knew that. You need to know what you're doing. And if you don't, mistakes can and do occur. And unfortunately, that's happened all too frequently in the United States. Even if it's because the treatment stopped working, your critics would say that the result is still the same, sure. that people were being poisoned on your watch. Uh, absolutely. Uh, critics, critics would say that, of course, but it's not the same, right? So uh, it's a difference between a homicide uh, and an accidental death, too, right? So at the end of the day, one was deliberate and purposeful, right? And uh, people uh, want to blur those lines. Newark started a new chemical treatment plan, but it could take a year to be effective. There's no corrosion control that's going to ever fix the trust that this local government has broken. I definitely feel like I've been lied to, like over and over again. The city's also racing to replace all its lead pipes in under three years. What happens until then? Kids still have lead poisoning. People still can't brush their teeth with the water. What happens? Cities across the country have lead pipes, and unless we get those lead pipes out of the ground, they are at risk for lead crises like we're seeing in Newark and Flint. The tragedy is that the vast majority of utilities are trustworthy, but once you have enough high-profile examples, people lose trust in the entire system. I'm not gonna drink my water again. I'm just not. I don't trust it. I will just buy bottled water until the end of my time. To prevent lead-in water crises, what it requires is something very simple. To tell the truth, to be honest, and if there's a problem, admit it so people can take steps to protect themselves. In Newark and Pittsburgh and Flint, all across the country, you see moms, you see pastors, you see people who live in these communities fighting to make their communities better. So if you are living in an area like this, recognize that Superman is not coming to save you because our administration knew about this for years. And it wasn't until now, when people started to get together, when people started to work, that anything has happened. Hey everyone, it's Angie. Has your community been impacted by a water crisis? We wanna hear from you. Share your experiences in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to AJ Plus.